Well, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be what? Amen. Amen. There you go. So I have a testimony, and that is on our broadcasts, okay? We've been asking God to take our broadcasts and, and send them around the world. Somehow, I don't know how he's going to do that because I don't understand the process. If somebody takes it and sends it to their friends or how it gets around, we found out that somebody in Israel is listening to our broadcasts. Isn't that beautiful? And in Europe, where else? There were several places that were on. Yeah, so please keep praying because it's the word. It's not, you know, it's not our church is so magnificent and, and, and you guys are, but it's the message of the word and it's good and it's clear and it's simplistic. You, God told me a couple of years back, he says, son, I want you to get back to the simple teachings of my word because I, and, and this is Jesus talking, he says, I never had a problem believing, um, having my people believe in the simplicity of the gospel. It's all the high-minded, fancy words, stuff that kind of keeps certain people out of the loop. Jesus' gospel is as simple that even a little child can understand it. On YouTube, you can find a lot of different playlists, uh, our music's always there for a week until the next week. It's called A1 Sunday Worship. You can go through and watch. Just get the worship. All the, or you can look at all the other folders that are there too. So, Are you ready? Grab your notes. Grab your Bibles. Get ready to take some, uh, some things that you want to do. You like to take notes and do some things. I have some great stuff that I want to give you from God. Some of which you know, but some of which the Spirit of God is going to open your eyes even to more things. been doing a series called reigning in life in Christ. Amen. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Amen. And how that we reign in life in Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of Christians today might still not heard the message. They don't have to live for God. They need to surrender and let God live through them. Say amen. That's the key to success, to have a good walk before the Lord. Doesn't mean you won't have problems. Doesn't mean that God isn't fixing you and causing you to grow up into him. But it also means that if he's doing the work, that not so much attack can come against you because you're not out in front. He is. Say amen. Now, I've given you enough information for you to grab hold of that. So let's look at our encouraging scripture that we're going to pop up there as fast as we can. And then we've got several other things that I want to share and set you up for the lesson today. All right? And so this is Matthew 11, 28 through 30 in the message. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me, Jesus says. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. See, there's the key. Eyes on Jesus. Watching how he steps through with your life. Learning the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep, your, keep company with me. 
and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. How many is into the freely and lightly part? Amen. And to keep company, a modern word for that is hang out with me. Hang out with God. Amen. You're privileged. You can do that. Amen. All right, so let me read my paragraph, and then we'll get to our scriptures that we're going to start. The subtitle of this message is called Growing in Faith Virtues. Growing in Faith, it's virtues. So it's faith. And, I, of course, my eye tooth is blocking everything. So we're growing in faith. Can you say amen? And with growing in faith, there's faith has virtues that God displays through us. Remember, God displays, God promotes us. We don't promote ourselves because as putting God first, he causes us to be repaired, restored, and flourishing. Can you say amen? Now, of course, the enemy doesn't want anything to do with that. So let me read my paragraph to you. Blessings to you, church family. We're going to share more on the inside of what it means to reign in life in Christ Jesus. We are to walk by faith. And grow in the knowledge of him. Do you believe that? And as we grow, we grow in grace and peace. Those things, grace and peace, are multiplied then unto us. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That means our sight, our hearing, all the physical things can deceive us. But God will not. So we walk by faith. Amen. And not by sight. Also, we follow Jesus closely because he's the captain and our shepherd. And the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. So if we really pay close attention and, and follow him, you'll be able to enjoy your life to the fullness and your wants will begin to go away. Because God already knows what you have need of before you ask. And like Linda was sharing, my wife was sharing earlier today, that God even knows how to fix things when you really don't know sometimes how to ask. He sort of supplies all of that, doesn't he? Woo, thank you God for doing that. We become, as a new creature, we become changed. We're a God type of species like we were originally designed to before Adam's fall. And we become exercised. If we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, we become exercised. He trains us. He's our trainer. He teaches us how to walk within our heads, within the Spirit, so that we can enjoy the kingdom and all of its benefits. Everyone say, I want to enjoy my God and all of his benefits in Jesus' name. And you are. Some of you are enjoying that. You're seeing your life come together. You're seeing good things come together. Not without challenges, but nevertheless, when Jesus is in control, who could be against us? God before us, who can? There you go. Amen. So, so as we follow God, God teaches us, by the help of the Holy Spirit, to rise above the beggarly elements of this world. How many know the world has a lot of snares and traps? There's a lot of tricks. One thing that the Lord showed me here recently, probably about two and a half years ago, is that how the enemy works things against each other. He gets, gets even us to try to oppose ourselves. James says a double-minded man is a, unstable in all his way. And so, or we disagree about silly things, you know, how it should be, how it shouldn't be done. Listen, one thing you got to remember about me, and this is for fun. If I ask you to get the ladder, I don't mean interpret what I mean. Just go get the ladder. And so today we see a society that seems to be mistrusting to one another and tries to interpret what people say instead of just listening. Hello? Uh, what I think I hear you saying, Tracy, is... Wouldn't that be terrible if we all did that all the time? But see, we do do that. Sometimes we, we think that it's, it's not so a certain way, but actually it is. So we've got to be careful what we set our opinions on. Make sure God keeps washing our, our thinking. Can you say amen? All right, so remember, we follow Jesus humbly and attentively. So we need to follow Jesus really humble and be very close to listen and be attentive. Can you say amen? Because why? He's going to show us how to walk through this life as he did. Now, when they wanted to kill Jesus, could they lay hands on him? Nope. It wasn't time yet. Several times they wanted to stone him or throw him off a cliff, didn't they? Couldn't touch him. Why? 
because his job wasn't done. Let me ask you this. Who lives in you? That's right. Who protects you? Who outshines with his light and his glory? Yeah, so his whole entire plan is to save you, to bless you, to help you to get where you need to be with him for eternity. And meanwhile, we do, in this world, we do go through things that are challenging. But with his wisdom and his power, we can rise above those bigger elements. All right. So let's get into this. We're going to cover these four things. Number one, we were given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Already, when Jesus rose from the dead and when we accepted Jesus Christ, he deposited all things that pertain to life and godliness. Number two, we have the key to God's divine nature. We have the key. A key opens doors, folks. A key unlocks things. A key also locks up things. You have the key to an open door of God, amen, of his divine nature. Thirdly, how to develop in God's virtues involves invested time. So if we're going to develop in God's virtues, to be like God, we're going to have to invest the time for him to change it. Say amen. amen. And then th fourthly, the importance of doing God's will on a daily basis. Importance of doing God's will. Now, these are simple truths, but again, the gospel is simple. Simple. And Paul wrote, I marveled at how the church has been so soon removed from the simplicity that is in the gospel unto another gospel. Hello. How many know there's only one gospel? I like to say it this way. You can borrow it. It's a gospel. Yeah. You take your gospel. You read a little word every day and the Holy Spirit amplifies it and you've had your medication. Your gospel. Isn't that cool? Amen. Here's another one for you. You can tell you're an addict on God because of your tracks. Little gospel tracks, you know. All right, let's move right on. All right, let's go to our first point. Number one, we were given all things that pertain to life and godliness. So let me give you a little wisdom. I heard for years and years, and you've heard for years and years, that all things work together for good for those that love God who goes to call according to his purpose. Now, I'm not belittling that scripture. But, you know, if you read that scripture in its context, it's not talking about everything. Everyone say, got it. got it. Because if everything works together for your good, let's give you some more cancer. How about a plane crash? You see, we've got to have common sense. What works together is exactly what I just told you, this first point. God has given you, when you receive Jesus in your heart, he brought with Jesus everything that pertains to life and godliness. Can you say amen? So you have a resource inside of you that's connected to heaven. And if you have the wisdom of God, you can dip right in there and pull out the wisdom of God for every situation, for every occasion. Say amen, somebody. Amen. The devil hates that. It's hidden from him. He doesn't know what God has for Tracy. He can only guess. He doesn't know our future, what God has for Scott. He can only guess. Here's Scott talking about the visions and him and Christy and all the good things that God's going to do. That's the only way he picks up on things. Remember, he cannot read your mind. He reads your expressions. So he says, you're a turkey and watches how you respond to what he says. Or if you hear him or not. Because sometimes I ignore him. He doesn't know if I'm listening. You see, you got the upper hand once you walk with the Lord. In fact, Jesus laughs at him because he's been stripped. Jesus kicked his booty. He's been stripped. But because we live in a world with so many distractions, everything's pulling at us, Michael, trying to get us not to concentrate on God. And all of a sudden, we're just all caught up. No, you meet with God, you get quiet with God, and he pans out your day for you. Could you say amen? And you learn as you walk by faith, don't trust your eyes completely. Don't trust your ears completely. But to trust the God who lives on the inside of you. Someone say amen. All right. So 
Romans, go with me to Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 31 and 32. We were given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Romans 8 verses 31 and 32. What then shall we say to these things? And remember, Paul went through a list of death, height, anything that happens in the world. Can all these things mount up against you? So he's, he's saying, these things, Satan mounts up all these trials, these tribulations, these tests. But look what he says in verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? Did you notice? You got a challenge coming your way, Mike? You, in the name of Jesus, you tell it to go away. And when a problem starts coming away, you go to God and you command it to go away. What shall we say to these things? You see, you have to say, get away from me. You just lighten up. Jesus Christ lives in me. And you have to declare who you are. Say amen. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, what? Yeah. Get a hold of that revelation. Who could be against us? 32. He who did not spare his own son for the purpose of freeing us up, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Now, is it everything? Or is it all things that pertain to life and godliness? How about, let me quote this scripture for us. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You guys know it. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Listen. Behold, all things become new. Now you've got the idea that there's a deposit of all living, godly revelation and wisdom with Jesus already on the inside of your spirit, man. All things become new. Now we have to learn to walk from the inside out, not from our reasoning anymore, not from just the way we used to walk, from the outside in, but we walk from Christ out. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, walk from the inside out. Say it boldly. Amen. So with Jesus, who lives in our heart, do we have all things that pertain to life and godliness? So guess what? A plane crashes in your future, you can rebuke it. Because God didn't plan it. How many know the enemy does have plans for you? Try to ruin you and stuff like that? That's why they're not set. They're not set in cement. But let me tell you, God's plans are set in cement for you. He just wants you to walk with Jesus so he gets you there. Can you say amen? All right. Let's go on. My second scripture is a very familiar one. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. I sure love all of you. Thank you for your patience with me. Look what it says. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? So the more we learn about God, the more grace and peace are multiplied to you. How many here is enjoying some of God's peace now? How would you like a little bit more? So the more you look at the word, the more the Holy Spirit helps you understand the knowledge of Christ, the more peace and more grace is upon you. Do you believe the word? Okay, it says it right there. I just want you to believe that, to know that that's what happens to you. So that's why the enemy doesn't want you to study, read your Bible, understand the, the principles, the New Testament of his word. Okay? And then it says... Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, as his divine power has given to us, there we go again, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the what? The more you have knowledge, the more you see what's yours. And the more you see what's yours, the more your faith grabs hold of it and pulls it into reality. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when your faith begins to see in the word of God, it gives you hope, it gives you faith, and your faith reaches out and grabs it. Can you say amen? And it becomes a physical reality and not just an inward reality. There are things in your life God's have in your spirit that are going to come out later on in your walk that are good. 
Amen. Not everything's going to come out as God gets you by the Spirit, being following Him, doing His steps. He brings things out. He matures us. Grace and peace is multiplied. And all of a sudden, we begin to settle in. And know the difference. There's a difference between having faith in God and trusting in God. Trust is passive and competent, while faith is aggressive. I'm believing for this. I'm believing for that. But trust is, Lord, I believe your word, and I rest in your provision. Difference. For example, Daniel in the lion's den. How was he in the lion's den? Was he panicked? Was he freaked? No, he was trusting God. He pulled up a lion and just went to sleep. You see, what I'm trying to get you to see, and God's helping us all, and me too, is how powerful God really is in your life. That you can yank up a lion and go to sleep on him. God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for one, he'll do it for the other. Everything that Jesus died and rose again for is upon all that would believe for it. There's no respect or persons. God doesn't say you can bless Tracy, but Christy's going to leave out today. No, it's all upon all. Now we just got to open up, become aware of it, and let grace and peace multiply in our heart. Someone say amen. amen. Woo, hallelujah. That's who you are. Now we, got to, we just got to keep on the focus, keep on the consistency. Why? Because God is bringing us into perfect restoration if he tarries long enough. Now someone says, well, do you think you're going to get a new foot? I know I'm going to get a new foot, either there or maybe on my journey. Hello? Nothing impossible with God. Now, I don't know if it's going to manifest one day and I'm preaching, but I'm certainly not going to shut down the fact that God can do anything. And it's always good. So we want to keep our believer going. Is guess what I'm saying to you? Keep your believer going. He's not done. He's just beginning. He says, come on, let's go for a walk. I got stuff to show you. All right, so you've got my first point. All the things that work together for good are already in you, and they are churning every day. And when you take yourself before God and you open up and say, Lord, I present myself to you, that churning starts to help us. And God says, then all of a sudden he starts ordering your life. And now you're following Christ with almighty power, peace, and influence. And that's where God wants us. It said that fear came upon all the neighborhoods where the people of God were gathered because of the presence of the Lord. Acts chapter 2. Okay, a couple of points I'm going to give you. Number one, we are a new species of being. Remember what I said last week, that God had purpose and plan for us to populate the earth and then the universe for a new species of being made in his likeness after his own image. Human beings, can you say amen? Satan didn't like it because he thought the planet was his. So he immediately declared war and, and corrupted God's creation. But Jesus didn't leave us there. Aren't you glad that God accepted you the way you were? And aren't you glad he doesn't leave you there? He's working with us. And he's not leaving us here in this prison either. Amen. <laughs> Number two, we have Jesus not only in us, but we've been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. And now we are learning how to walk with him to experience these benefits. Someone say, yeah. yeah. All right. Let me turn my page for you. Thirdly, God and his divine power has given to us everything we need and could ever want through the knowledge of getting to know Jesus and becoming, as we get to know him, we're becoming transformed. How do we become transformed? By the renewing of our mind. So as we get into the Word of God, our mind begins to see different pictures, not past pictures, not worldly pictures, not simple pictures, but pictures of God and His glory and of heaven and what He has planned. Suddenly our hope begins to grow. We suddenly see vivid pictures of God's plan, what He wants, and we begin by faith to walk towards that. Can you say amen? Knowing that Jesus is leading us. We're following Him. Now, I had a vision years ago. Well, let me just tell you about it. I was preaching in South Prairie. Where's that at, Pastor Kerry? 
And a little Assembly of God Church, we were having a revival. Now, the, re the Assembly of God Church um, quit. They, were, they shut down because there was no people in South Prairie, 450 probably at the most. And so I'm preaching down there, and I got all these people. There's probably two, 200 people there. I want, this is what I want you. You see, we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. So I'm preaching along, and suddenly I step out of my body back about a foot. And as soon as I stepped out of my body, now remember, I didn't do this. I had nothing to do with this. I'm having a vision. I stepped out of the back of my body, and I looked. I saw angels everywhere in that church. They were stuck on the wall, just like they were sitting in a chair, and they're all smiling at me. Just instantly, I saw this. I saw the back of my head, and that's scary. <laughs> I'm staring at the back of my head, and I'm silhouetted, so I'm seeing through, through me. This all happened in a split second, but I need to share this stuff with you so that you can have these things too and don't freak out about it. And I'm standing, I saw all these angels and everything, and God says, this is exactly what I want you, is I want you to realize that you are a spiritual person, and you are to follow me just like to see your back of your head. You're following me. And you're seeing through me, but you're seeing through my nature and my divine presence. So get a picture of that. And ever since he showed me that in a little vision, I stepped right back in my body, and I went, Oh, I had to stop preaching and everything, and I go, oh. Now, too bad we didn't have camera back then or anything to capture that. But, but it was amazing. Now, could I repeat that? I have no idea. I didn't do it. But the idea, God wanted me to show that we are actually following God's leading. We're following God's leading. So God help us all to not make God's decisions for him. When it comes to our life, to not to take our life in our hands again, can't get out of there. We do, and we need to ask God to help us with that. And sometimes we'll start taking the lead. And God said, wait a minute. What are you doing over there, Carrie? I'm over here at home plate. You're out in left field. Let's go on. All right, let's go to our second point. Very important to follow God. Amen. We're called to glory and virtue, aren't we? So let's bring glory and virtue into this planet by following Jesus. All right, my second point. We have the key God, to God's divine nature. Say his name is Jesus. So that's why the Father, or ask why Jesus says, in the day that I go to be with the Father, you will ask me nothing. Remember the disciples had Jesus with him. So they just asked him, hey, what's tomorrow going to hold? What are we going to eat today? They just talked to Jesus because he was right there. But when Jesus is going to go away, he says, in that day, you will ask me nothing. But whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You be glad that I go away because if I go not away, I cannot send another helper to help you and show you how to be like me. Amen. The comforter come, see. Yeah. He's, his job is to guide us into all truth. He holds our future. And to walk us through the different truths. For example, let's say we're studying about, you know, being spiritual. Well, then the Holy Spirit will take you during the week if you keep your eyes on him. And he will walk you through the lesson. All week long, he'll walk you through the lessons that you learn if you keep focused on him. Why? Because he builds us up from the inside out. He's building us up in his kingdom within us so that we're not moved by outward circumstances, but we rather move circumstances. We become the mountain movers. We become the tree pluckers because we can command these things to get out of our way. You might say, well, what is a mountain? A mountain is an obstacle. Hello. Or if you like to go skiing, it could be fun. But it's an obstacle. So if you're traveling on a donkey or walking between here and there, and you've got to get across to eastern Washington, you need to remove a mountain. <laughs> and really, that's what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about every obstacle. Now listen carefully. This is beautiful. Every obstacle that seems to raise up and to push against you, to hinder you from you getting to the next place Jesus wants you to be, you have every right to remove it. Because God didn't put it there. Now, I'm not talking about physical stuff now. You know, I'm not here. I'm talking about the spiritual challenges the enemy throws at us. It says we'll never amount to anything or do anything. You can remove those mountains. Say amen. Yeah. 
All right. So a couple of points underneath me. All right. Now, in the second point, 2 Peter 1, 4. Let, let me read it with you. By which we have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Do you believe those? There are, what you can get is what we call a promise book with all the promises of God in it. I recommend you get one. So if you're praying or you're, you're looking for something, you might find a scripture to really back what you're believing. Those are important to have the foundational scriptures under your feet. Say amen. So you need a pocket promise book so you know all of these promises, precious promises, that we might part, be partakers of his divine nature. Say amen. So you found, first found out you're a new creature. Ah, I can believe for new. And then you found out God's not condemning you. Oh, he loves me. See, as you learn these things, grace gets multiplied. And then I don't know about you, but when I found out God was not mad at me, that he wasn't causing the junk to happen in my life, I had more peace. Hallelujah. Now, if I look at you in a sermon or I preach towards you, it doesn't mean I'm pointing you out, okay? <laughs> if I mention your name, you've got to get the tape. Amen. All right. So anyway, are you still with me? All right. To be partakers of his divine nature. Now look at this next phrase. Having escaped the corruption that is in, in the world through lust. Your body has lusts and has desires. That's why it's important to, if you're, a husband, if you're a lady and a man, to find the right man, find the right woman, and get married, and then God blesses your marriage bed, he blesses your life, that you can experience all that. But the flesh without the contentment of God's nature in us is like a, a rabid beast. And it would go off the wall. And then after you, you blew it and you got off the wall, I'm just speaking general, the devil will just jump on your shoulder and condemn you about it. That's why it's important that we understand the promises. We understand our importance of being close to God so that the God in us can laugh at the temptations that the enemy throws at us. Hello? The enemy periodically was in your life. Now he's not in your life. So he's going to try to come back. If you don't believe that, he, it says when a spirit leaves a man, it walks by a dry rate place and then says, I will return to my house. So there are spirits that are not clean that have been involved in your life. You don't want back. Say amen. So you don't want to open that door. These precious promises in our getting close to God drives these things away. Because we're so content in God, we don't think about running out there and sinning. Can you say amen? Had a guy say to me, oh, you preachers of grace. Is there any other? You preachers of grace, you're telling everybody that God forgives them and loves them. They're just going to go out and sin anyway. I says, yeah. But if we get them close to God and get them filled with God, the God in them will keep them from wanting to do that. See, they forget. They're trying to handle things. If I change a wife, I change a country, everything in my life is going to be better. If I make this, maybe got a new job. See, we don't change physical things to make our spiritual life better. We change our spiritual attitude to get closer to God so our physical life becomes better. Can you say amen? All right. A couple of points. Number one, church, having God's divine nature in us unlocks and opens the door to the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the doorkeeper. So when he sees you, Sherry, approaching the kingdom in Jesus' name, he opens the door and say, walk in, let me show you what's here. There's an invisible kingdom right in front of your face that has every provision of God, every, every bit of grace, everything that's got, but only access is through Christ and walking in faith virtues. We're going to show you that in a minute. So you have access to the entire kingdom of heaven. Can you say amen? But the moment we get fleshy, the moment we get in unforgiveness, the moment we get to a place where it's got to be my way or the highway, the door is slammed. And grace is cut off. You shut it off. God didn't shut it off. We shut it off. Because God resists the... And gives grace to the... 
So we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. And then we come in the name of Jesus, and the door opens wide. It says, God, and God says, come on in. I got a tour to show you. You're going to have a guided tour of heaven and heaven things and, and supernatural gifts and all that. You want that? Amen. So let's follow this and see what it says. Okay. So we have these exceeding precious promises. Point one, the church having God's divine nature will open all the doors to the kingdom of God, letting Jesus take the lead. Say amen. He's your key. Two, remember that we are walking in Christ, not ahead of him, not from the natural man, but in the spirit realm, which unlocks God's grace. Can you say amen? Because he loves us. And then thirdly, Walking in the spirit lifts us out of the nature and into the spiritual realm where we avoid stumbling and tripping and falling and keep being like a bumblehead. Hello? Don't you believe God says lift your leg over the log? Don't fall on it. Can you say amen? And if God's taking the lead, can he guide us away from danger? I say Amen. And when we learn to really pick up on one, he's not going to take your joy away from you. You're going to have more joy than you could ever believe. More fun, more excitement. Because you're not walking around thinking whether you're good or bad or you're going to make a mistake. Jesus is in charge. You put him there. You did it that morning. Follow him through the day and at night. When it comes to night, and you're going to lay your head down on the pillow. I call it, get in the sack. You know? Say, Lord, I just give you everyone. I, I just release them in your hands. I plead the blood of Jesus over their children, their grandchildren, all of them. Lord, watch over them. Let them sleep. Let them rest, Lord God. And I just know tomorrow when they wake up, you'll greet them and love them. In Jesus' name, off I go. We don't want to hold anything from the day. You see, we might have conquered a lot of things during yesterday. Got some victories. But then there were some challenges, too. But now, today is Sunday. That was yesterday. And God brings all the victories over to the next day and leaves all the sludge behind. Can you say amen? And the only one that brings it over into today is us. Hey, not, it's bad enough just to worry about yesterday. Let's bring it in today. And let's worry a little bit today. Hello? No. No, today's a fresh start. Everyone say fresh start. fresh start. I'm cleansed. I'm free. It's a fresh start every day. Amen. And so immediately focus on the Lord. Watch what happens. All right, let's go on. Third thing I'm going to give you on this, and we're going to get our third point here, is walking in the spirit lifts us out of that natural negativity. Okay, next point. Developing in God's virtues involves time investment. How many know you got to spend time with God? I know, I, I had people get mad at me when I started preaching the message, meet with God first thing every morning, stay within your heads. When I started preaching that, everybody would say, you're just pushing this prayer in the morning thing too much. And you know, I looked at them, you know, and probably everybody said it a time or two. And I said, you know, I, I went to God with that. I said, Lord, why am I doing this? He says, in order for me to get anything to done, I've got to get your attention. If you don't meet with me first, then everything else has got your attention. I play second, third, fourth fiddle. You meet with me so I can write you, get you squared and going. It doesn't have to be long so that you're headed the right way. You know, sometimes life will spin us around and blindfold us. And then they say, go pin the tail on something. You're walking around like, oh, don't let the world spin you around. You meet with God and let to get those little in tunes things going on in your spirit and let him guide you through that day. And accuracy, he'll make you be accurate in your prayers. All right. So here we go. But also for this reason, give all diligence. That means get with it, folks. Add to your faith what? Virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, love. 
For if these things are in, are yours, say they're mine. And now notice what, look at the next phrase. And abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa. What is virtue? It's an outward display. Hello. Don't tell people you're a Christian. Show them. It's virtue. And the more you get used to showing than telling, the more virtuous you'll become. So let's look what it says. Add to your virtue knowledge. Why? Because being special, which God makes you special, and having virtues kind of has this tendency to, want us to get us to know more. And we know grace and peace are multiplied through the knowledge of him. So we add to our virtues, our excellence, knowledge. Can you say amen? Because some people could be professional, but they don't have a clue on who they're representing. But they look good. So add to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge what? Self-control. Here's one that a lot of Christians fail at. Self-control does things like when you, you know you could really tell somebody off, you choose not to. When you know you could have that second plate, of food, you choose not to. You do what is right even though you don't feel like it. Hello, these are the virtues. Amen. And as you grow in knowledge, knowledge puffs up, charity edifies. So if you're just getting a lot of knowledge, you'll find out there are a lot of Christians, they can quote the Bible, I know that, but their lives are trashed. Knowledge itself isn't good you got to have a walk with God. Say amen. Because knowledge will just puff us up and God resists the proud. Yeah. Okay. So you don't want just knowledge. You want to experience going with God. Say amen. Then it goes on and he says, and, and you add to your, your, your knowledge self-control. Because people who know stuff, they take sometimes little expressions where they shouldn't. When you're knowledgeable, you have a tendency to look down at everybody. Don't, don't do that. Look up. Yeah. Encourage them. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. knowledge will puff our heads up in pride. What, did Satan, what was one of the Satan's problems? He thought he knew it all. Yeah. Take heed. He that thinketh you stand, lest you fall. The idea is to have a balance. Say amen. All right. And so we add to our, our knowledge self-control. And to self-control, perseverance, endurance. Folks, there's no quitting. Could you imagine quitting on Jesus? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? So it's persevering. Now, back in those days when this was writ being written... People were being sawed in half and burned at a stake, thrown to the lions. Now, we're in America. We're not getting quite that. Can you say amen? But there are other temptations that work on us differently. Lusts, and drugs, and all kinds of things, you know, play on us. But in their playing on us, we follow Jesus. Can you say amen? And so they're there to distract us away from a real solid walk with God. And so it takes self-control. And with self-control, we have to persevere through that situation. Jesus said, in the world, you're going to have some tribulation. Fear not, little flock. I've overcome the world. Now, where are we? We're in Christ. So the overcomer is in us. Can you say amen? And we can either sit down, not persevere, or we can get up and keep on going. Can you say amen? So we add to our perseverance, godliness. That's the old Greek word, piety, which means that you don't necessarily tell everybody you're Christian. Everybody can see it because the fruit of the Spirit's there, your joy's there, you help people, you serve, and you're, you're doing your best. So actually what you're doing is saying a lot louder than what you're saying. And so... That really is, is really that godliness that we need to display. Can you say amen? How many's ever been at a poker table where the stakes were pretty high? Worst thing you can do is show your emotion. Maybe make some stuff up. 
so they'll throw everybody off. But see, they're reading every inch of your body to try to figure out what you're going to play next, right? Come on. What do you think the devil's doing? So when you get up and you stay persevering and consistent, he knows what you're going to do tomorrow because you're going to kick his booty like you did today. Hello? You're consistent. You're persevering. Amen, Jerry. And that's how we get the results that God promised us. They don't just happen at once. Are you with me? So walking in the spirit lifts us out of the natural. So let's go ahead and look at these points below this, okay? So we add to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly what? Folks, we need to be kind to one another. If you haven't got anything good to say to somebody, smile and say, I like your hair. <laughs> Who knows? But see, a lot of people look at me, and if I look at something sternly, they try to interpret what I mean. And really what you got to do is, if you're, if you're a worker in the church here, know what really goes on to have a service. Don't stand in the middle of the way of the camera when the service is going on. Don't be talking when the pastor's talking. I mean, you know, we know those things through the wisdom of God. Can you say amen? But, you know, a lot of times people do things wrong, but it doesn't do any good to keep showing, hey, you did that wrong, you did that wrong, you did that. If you did that to your kids, what would happen? You'd have rebellion on your hands. Instead, encourage them, love them, and say, hey, we can do this better. Can you say Amen. All right. Are you ready to give more investment time to God so he can make you into more of a beautiful person? Amen. All right. Believers, we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Amen. To stay in self-control, we need to have a stick-to-it attitude. Folks, I used to weigh 325 pounds. Could you imagine? A big balloon with stick legs. I got pictures of me enough to scare anybody. Now, I'm not picking on anybody because we all wrestle that. The enemy wants us out of sorts, out of balance, so that we're ineffective. But thank God you and I know how to self-control. We know how to get ourselves in the place of God. Amen. And to love others. Be kind to one another. As we sow, so shall we reap. All right, we won't stay. And then add to kindness, brotherly love. Notice it says brotherly love. Kindness, brotherly love. Loving one another. Now, 1 Corinthians 13. One of my favorite chapters. What you got to know about that chapter is it's not talking about love. It's talking about Jesus. Love thinketh no evil. Jesus thinks no evil. So replace the word love there with Jesus. Interchange them. You know, if though I have the gift of prophecy and I can remove all this and all that, if I have not Jesus, it profits me nothing. And you'll get a better understanding of that particular chapter. One of the things it says about brotherly love, it says love doesn't even notice other people's faults. Now, that's a hard one. Come on. Everyone smile up at me. <laughs> I can hide behind that one. I got lots of them. <laughs> but really, love doesn't go after looking at how better you are than another person. Love goes after ministering the hearts of people because we're family and bringing this out together. Can you say amen? And learning those principles. It's, it doesn't happen overnight. We have to learn another way in which to behave and to act, say amen, with brotherly love. All right, couple points. Notice it says to add to your faith, what? Virtue. All right. So let's go to our next point. The importance of doing and displaying God's will. Go with me to 2 Peter chapter 1 again, verses 10 through 15. It says, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. That's that word, get after it. Okay? To make your call, God called you, an election, your being with him, sure. For if you do these things, notice the word do these things, you will never what? 
stumble or fall. Wow. Now, I know about you. There was a time in my walk, just seemed like every day I was kicking something or stumbling over something. But it says that these virtues that are in us, if they will come out and be displayed, God will see that you don't stumble. Whoa. See, you don't keep yourself from stumbling. God in you keeps you from stumbling. Do you like this scripture? Yeah. Oh, good. Let's master this one. Remember who Peter was? Wasn't he the one who said, Jesus, I'll never deny you. And then the cock crowed. He had denied him three times. In the book of Acts, Peter was up on a rooftop and he fell into a trance. And God, speaking to Peter, drops his, this vision down on him three times. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? And so God had Peter's number. And so he hit three times every time he talked to Peter. Peter, you love me? Oh, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you really love me? Feed my sheep. Then he goes again. Peter, are you really my friend? What are you doing here? You should be feeding my sheep. He got mad at Jesus. Did you know that? Because he said it three times. That's not only that, but when we finish this chapter, Peter's going to remind us three times to pay close attention to what you learned today. <coughs> So let's look at this. <coughs> I went and yelled. Ah. All right. So the importance of going and displaying God's will. 2 Peter 1, 10. Therefore, brethren, again, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you'll never stumble. For so an entrance. Look at this. See, the Holy Spirit's your guide to her. He, he will guide you. So an entrance is going to be opened or will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It says if you allow these virtues to come out of you and you walk with the Lord, that God will give you a tour of all that he has for you. He'll walk you in and show you how to move in the spirit, how to prophesy. He'll show you how to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He'll begin to teach and train you. Why? Because no longer have the, the essence of the enemy and, and the problems of the carnal man, but now you're a walking child of God. Everything's open to you. Your father's not going to say, you can't come in here. He's going to say, come on in, let me show you a few things. Says it right there. And so shall an entrance be supplied unto you of the everlasting kingdom of God. When did the kingdom come? Pentecost. Who's building the kingdom in us through his word? God is. Amen? And if we'll let the displays of God come out of us, We'll open the door to the kingdom and God will take us and walk us through all the supernatural things that he has for you. How many are into that? Hello? Boy, you got an exciting, exciting life ahead of you. To know this stuff and to follow God like you are, ooh, it's going to be glorious. Really glorious, folks. Notice it says, as you do all these things, an entrance will be supplied unto you. Amen. I love that. I'm going to turn my page and we'll finish with you now. Verse 12 says, for this reason I will not neglect to remind you. First reminder, Peter's teaching how, remember Peter's on his, close to death. He's giving his, his strongest message in 2 Peter that he can possibly give to the wisdom of God's people for the help their walks to become more of a champion and more effective in the kingdom. Do you believe that? And so he says, I reason that I will not neglect to put you in a remind reminder of these things, though you know them and are established in the present truth. Verse 13, yes, I think it right. As long as I am in this tent, his body, to stir you up to what? reminding you what do Christians do we forget 
What do humans do? We forget. The older we get, it seems like we forget more. Not really, but don't claim it. But we do. My wife got up this morning and says, what was your name again? Oh, anyway. I'm joking, honey. She's got a big prophet rock she's going to throw at me. All right. A pepperoni stick. All right. So let's go on. And I stir up and reminded you, verse 14, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, my, my body, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder. So listen, don't get tired of hearing me preach the same thing, overemphasizing certain things over and over again. Because let me just say this to you. I went to God about that. He says, Lord, I have so much more to share. He says, son, if they don't get what you first give them, how can they go on to the second thing? Not that you... Not that I think you're that way. But it says, unless they meet with me, unless they get this part down, then the rest of it's going to crumble periodically when they try to operate in it. Because I'm the operator. And if you bypass me, then you're operating it. And we can only, for a short time, mimic and operate spiritually. You've seen them. Let's say the Lord, sell your dog and move to Alaska. There's a gift of prophecy, but it's in the flesh. It doesn't work, you see. And so God wants us to enjoy what he has laid out before us and just enjoy one another, to pray for one another, to lift one another up. Why? Because he has great plans for us. You will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of his will. Can you say amen? So church, we are to make our calling and election sure. We're to stay faithful and stay and stick to it. Secondly, church, we are to do, be doers of these virtues, not just think about them. Let me say this, and God spoke to me three times this morning. He says, many Christians will acknowledge a truth is so. They will acknowledge the truth, but somehow they won't practice it. So they'll know to do something, but they're not practicing what it says to do. Are they going to get the results? No. And they're going to wonder what's going on. And there are Christians today, you know, listen, the Bible says to be a giver so God can prosper you. And you'll just say, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much a giver. And we'll kind of float over those things. Listen, don't float over this scripture. Go in there and ask, how, Lord, is this working in my life and all this so I can apply it and become a doer of it and be blessed with Christ. How he, shall he not with them give us all things? Can you say amen? Because we're doers of the word and not what? Hearers only. If you got something out of that this morning, will you give the Lord praise? Amen. Thank you.